the jobless claims coming in uh, a little bit higher uh, than what economists had forecast at 359,000. Uh, and the prior week was also revised up to 364,000. So that's not the trend that you want to be seeing if you're looking for an economic recovery. You don't want to see jobless claims going up. However, it is still near uh, this low that we have seen in the 350,000 mark. I want to bring in uh, our next guest. He is Guy Leva of Janney Montgomery Scott. He's the chief fixed income strategist. And uh, Guy, tell us, I mean, you know, the fact that these numbers are sort of trending now a little bit higher here in jobless claims, does that worry you at all? Well, on the margin, you know, the, these sort of weekly numbers tend to be pretty noisy, so it's too hard to read a lot into just a couple of weeks with a slightly softer data. And keep in mind, less than six months ago, we were talking about 400,000 as the magic mark, and now we're looking at 350,000 as a magic mark. <laughs> right. So in the scheme of things, you know, the job markets have That's definitely better. improved yeah. over the last few months. But definitely. there are some questions you have about the jobs data, right? What are they? Right. The biggest issue that we have right now is a question of warmer weather. And how many or how much of the improvement in the jobs market has really been the result of fewer construction firings or layoffs over the winter because it's been pretty nice up here in the Northeast. Mm. So, so it's very hard to parse exactly what role the warmer weather and other sort of one-time factors are playing in the jobs economy over the last so couple how, months. When, how or when will we get a clearer picture then, Guy? Well, I think we'll get a better picture with April's data. So we still have a few more weeks till we see jobless claims that are concurrent with sort of the, the nicer part of the year weather-wise and another rough four and a half weeks before we see actual monthly data, which is a key. Okay, Julie? Uh, Guy, I, I'm just curious, when you're looking at the jobless claims data and you're trying to figure out the warm weather question, I mean, how is the other data sort of feeding into that? Are there other data points that are related that, or, or is everything being skewed by warm weather, or are there others that you can look at that are a little more divorced from it? Yeah, typically we don't look to, for example, the manufacturing industry as something that's all that affected by the weather. However, when you look at retail sales, on the other hand, that seems to be very, very weather sensitive. You know, frankly, individuals, if they can't get to the shopping malls, they're not going to be purchasing those clothes. However, a business that finds it challenging to, you know, be able to have people there, it's not as big a deal in ordering large pieces of capital equipment. So if you look at the manufacturing data, that's less weather sensitive. The retail data tends to be more weather sensitive. Uh, and we just got these uh, revisions to GDP, and, and it's very well known what has happened in the fourth quarter, but is there anything new here uh, in the GDP numbers that you can glean from that tell you something? Yeah, we really look to the, the, the third revision of GDP or the third round of GDP data each quarter for corporate profitability information. And it looks like corporate profits grew about 7% year over year in the fourth quarter. So we're seeing a slight deceleration in the pace of corporate profitability growth, which, as you know, is a major driver of economic output. So I think corporate profitability is kind of returning to more of a stable state after a post-recession sort of bump that lasted roughly 18 months. So what does that mean for the jobs market then, Guy? Well, I think it means it's very hard to parse the source of future jobs growth. And, you know, Bernanke referenced this earlier this week in interviews and his a discussion before the NABE, which is saying that, all right, the labor markets are getting better, but it's really hard to figure out why they're getting better, and so we don't trust it. And so, so as, a, as a firm, Janney and, and our group, we hold that same sort of level of skepticism. We can't prove where it's coming from. That means we can't prove where it's going. Well, where do you think it's coming from? I mean, you know, where do you, where do you think it's coming from? So there's a sort of traditional economics rule which states you take GDP growth, you subtract off 2.5%, and that's the pace of change in the unemployment rate. So GDP growth in 2010 was roughly, what, excuse me, 11, 1.7%. Right. So in theory, in 2011, we should have seen jobs destroyed, not created. Mm. What I think we're seeing is this big buildup, this big backlog that was sort of the result of recession-era firings finally coming through the pipeline today, now 18 months, 24 months after the Great Recession really ended. That's interesting. Okay, so uh, there's not a lot of faith then in, in many ways that this jobs recovery is going to continue through the end of this year, though. Is that, is that what right. we're reading into this? We're not expecting it to slow down dramatically, but it's that confidence interval that really gives us pause right now, which is to say that if you're a policymaker and you don't have confidence the labor markets will continue to improve at the same pace they have been, it's very hard to take action right now or change your policy path. Right, to change the policy and certainly to raise interest rates, but does the Fed then the fact that Bernanke said, look, it's not off the table that QE3 is is there. 
um, does that make him, you know, the fact that when he talked about the labor market, does it make it more credible with what he said then about QE3 and that it's not off the table? Well, I think the Fed has still a lot of credibility in their ability, in their willingness to fight inflation. That's sort of a vestige of historical experience. They have less and less credibility as each of these rounds of quantitative easing go through, less and less credibility as to their ability to simulate economic growth which although I believe the Fed is having an impact, the lag time that it takes to have an impact on the real economy is so great right now, a Fed action that takes place today probably won't be felt for 18, even 24 months down the road. But Gee, isn't there an argument though that the Fed is actually less and less credible on fighting inflation because they have been so uh, easy to, you know, tur turn out and, and churn out the, the money during the Right, and there's, there's, been, there's been, as you noted, there's been plenty of criticism about their easy money policies right. over the last few years. But if you take a look at the markets and the market's expectation of inflation, which is driven by trading in inflation-protected treasuries, we see that, that that credibility of an inflation fighter is still there. Expected inflation rates out 30 years are still less than 2.5%. So, mm. so that suggests the Fed still has a lot of power, despite the fact that energy prices have been rising. Over. That's right, which has been quite interesting and, and puzzling in many ways and how that hasn't flowed through yet. Okay, Guy, great to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Guy LeBas of Jenny Montgomery Scott.